Good morning, folks. We've got to hit the sun, severe weather, atmospheric electricity, Mars, and our top science news. The solar features are hiding, so we'll start there at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star, coronal holes on the south, no sunspots or eruptive behavior. Yesterday, we saw that there was an increase in solar wind intensity, but that was very short-lived. Despite the sharp jolt to the telemetry, the plasma stream never exceeded 400 kilometers per second, geomagnetic conditions never met with instability, and are calming further this morning. It is indeed evident that there is not even eruptive potential on the Earth-facing half of the Sun, but there is a hint of something coming, visible over the northeastern limb. This is in fact the light effects from the umbral magnetic fields of the sunspots crossing the far side. Let's use Stonyhurst heliographic starting at Earth-facing zero longitude, and then spinning around to Stereo A's view of the incoming active regions. Brightness is easily visible, and those are the same active regions we saw depart the Earth-facing half of the Sun about a week ago. They'll be coming back around in a few more days. Tornadoes continue dropping in the United States. It's 2011 all over again. In Iowa, we're seeing considerable damage, but luckily there are no reports of injuries from those storms. Tornadoes dropped in Indiana as well, but it appears that Illinois took just as bad of windstorms. Then, after the sun went down, the tornadoes continued dropping in Ohio. This is near Dayton, where the debris litters the highway and tens of thousands are in the dark. Also of note, southeast Alaska is experiencing one of its worst droughts on record. If this continues, we could see record wildfires in the state over the coming weeks. Interesting story relating to the unfathomable amount of rain seen in the states recently, especially in key portions of the new Valley of the Sun, running along the eastern side of the Rockies from Denver down through Albuquerque and into Mexico, where more rain for the desert is the number one expected future effect from the grand solar minimum due up later this century. Our first science story today is a fun one. A similarity between solar flares and earthquakes is found in their shockwave circumnavigation back to triggering the original region in about three hours in terms of aftershock quakes and one hour later in terms of solar X-ray production. That is a much faster distance of shock travel in a third of the time. Coming up today, there is a rare gathering of the joint USA-ESA Space Council, meeting and discussions to be broadcast at the link below. The ESA is also offering up much more information on their Mars sampling missions with infographics and videos explaining the mission, the specifics, and how they plan to deliver these samples and their information back to Earth. The discovery of small microbes in Ethiopian volcanoes adds to the extremophile list. Here, temperatures nearing 200 degrees Fahrenheit, extreme acidity, and salinity all seem to be the preferred state of these bacteria. From this to the ocean floor to the outside of the ISS, we are finding that life has very different definitions of habitability than we normally presume. An excellent paper describes a high-detail atmospheric electricity examination producing a magnetic model of electromagnetic properties of the marine atmospheric boundary layer. It is always good when the global electric circuit gets some attention, and frankly, had to work a little bit for that one not to go over my head, which is a pretty good sign for the science in general. In the human screwing with nature category, the concept of antibiotics getting into the water is scary, and when that level exceeds safe standards by 300 times, you begin to considerably change both the healthiness of the water for consumption and the microbiome of the river systems, the absolute foundations of the food chain. That's an unfortunate story. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.